Understanding digital certificates is crucial in protecting data, establishing trust, and maintaining privacy in today's digital world. Let's dive into why they are important and how they keep our information secure. Let's begin by understanding symmetric encryption. In this method, the same key is used for both encryption and decryption, meaning the sender and receiver must share the same secret key. Now, let's talk about asymmetric encryption, it's like the dynamic duo of cryptography. This time, we're using two keys, a public key and a private key. Here's the fun part, if you encrypt something with the public key, only the private key can decrypt it. So, while you can lock it up with the public key, you need the private key to unlock it. It's like sending a secret message, where only the right person has the key to read it. Here's a quick example, Alice has a private key, and the group, including Bob, has her public key. If Bob encrypts a message using the public key, only Alice can decrypt it with her private key. No one else in the group can read it, ensuring the message goes to the right person. In asymmetric encryption, what's encrypted with one key can't be decrypted with the same key. A check with a name and check number is an asymmetric use case, where the bank or teller only needs to verify if it's from Jane Doe. Hashing differs from encryption, it creates a 1 colon 1 mapping, meaning the same file will always produce the same hash. In encryption, plain text is encrypted, while hashing creates a digest. Encryption hides information, whereas hashing is used for verifying data integrity. In this example, Alice and Bob use a symmetric algorithm with a shared key. Alice hashes the email with the key, while Bob decrypts the email and creates the same hash to verify if authentication succeeds or fails. In this scenario, Tom holds a private key, while his organization has his public key. When Tom sends an email, he encrypts it with his private key, and anyone in the organization can decrypt it using his public key, verifying the email's authenticity. Now, if a bad actor, X, gains access to Tom's public key, X could intercept the email, decrypt it, re-encrypt it using their own private key, and send it to the organization. However, since it's encrypted by X, the organization can't decrypt it with Tom's public key, revealing a man-in-the-middle attack. In the digital world, certificate authorities handle public key distribution and authentication. Certificate authorities are like a government. Just as you trust a government-issued document like a passport, you trust certificates they authorize. Digital certificates, like passports, have key details such as license status, expiration date, and other necessary information needed for authorization. Tom obtains a digital certificate by sending information like his IP address and business name to a certificate authority. After verifying the details, the authority issues the digital certificate, which Tom can then send with his email. The digital signature also includes the public key. Just like a passport can be verified through a government portal, a digital signature can be verified through the certificate authority. The digital authority generates a hash when assigning the digital signature and uses the same hash for verification. To view a digital signature, simply visit any HTTPS website and follow the on-screen instructions for verification. Thank you, and follow Pushpuck for more weekly info.